Let's see here. Hi, this is Linda West with Living Live, and I'm super excited to introduce you guys to Mark Mawany. Now, I met him at a conference in November in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I loved his message. One of the things I was like most mostly impressed with was that he's like, I'm here all about the content and I'm not here to sell to you guys or sell at you guys. It's all about providing content. And that totally 100% resonates with me. I'm all about providing value. So I'm mean, hoping that today you'll be able to walk away with being able to learn how you can get more coaching clients without paid advertising. If this is something you're really interested in, you know, please go ahead and you know share comments below, ask us questions below during the live. And actually, even if you're watching the replay, go ahead and ask questions then also because Mark and or I will come back and answer those questions. So let's welcome Mark to the show. Hello, Mark. It's good to see you today. Hey, hey Linda. It was nice meeting you in Charlotte. So uh, beautiful city. It was my first time there and I'm glad you invited me on. Yeah, it was my first time there too. I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> it was there. It's a little <laughs> colder than I'm used to. I'm in San Diego. So. Unfortunately, I picked uh, the one time when you're going through your midterm elections. So I had to <laughs> escape the, the craziness and get back to Canada. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny while we were there. I didn't know, but there was a marathon the day I was leaving. And so to get out of town literally took almost an hour because we had to wait for all the marathon runners to go. I was like, I'm going to miss my plane, but I didn't. That, that's a really long story with my way home. I got stuck in Toronto um, the night before because we had crazy uh -huh. winds on the east coast of Canada. So my flight was canceled. And then there was no power at the airport when I was landing back home. And it felt uh -huh. a little bit like the pilot episode of Lost where the plane okay. was taken. I'm thinking, oh, God, <laughs> we're going to land on an island somewhere. And uh, the, the flight attendant looks scared. And when the flight attendant looks scared, then I worry because the amount of times they're flying. Usually I'm a good flyer, but uh -huh. my hand was welded to the armrest. And, and by the time it landed, everybody broke out in applause and everything. But it was a, oh my God. it was an interesting flight home from Charlotte. Yes. That is scary. And, you know, that's true. Like if the flight attendant, you know, has that look on their face, like that's when you know it's time to, you know, bend over and just kiss your goodbye. Just to freak everyone out, I was going to stand up and go, we're all going to die. No, that would have been bad. <laughs> you know, you could have just said snakes on a plane, snakes on yeah, a plane. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Take that was a, a great movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those like, uh, I'm not sure about this one. It's one of the movies that uh, the, the year or two before it was released, it had a really big buildup. I think a lot of people, it wasn't as cool as people thought when we first heard the concept of snakes on a plane. And uh -huh. the movie is kind of, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it, but the movie got lambasted a bit and kind of, <laughs> yeah. it, it didn't win any Oscars. Uh, that's pretty safe to say, but it, right. it was a good example of great marketing and a good idea before the movie came out. And then it's like, oh, gee, was this, should we have made a movie about snakes on a plane? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. did, did the world need that? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it might have been better just not to have all that uh, marketing ahead of time as much of it, right? Yeah, and I guess you're, um, and uh, this is a coaching world. You see this all the time too. People are great at selling the hype, but if mm -hmm. you can't deliver the actual results, then, you know, it's always good to, uh, as, as they say, under promise and over deliver as opposed yes. to the opposite. Yeah. And too often out there, people are doing the over promising and under delivering, right? We see it like all There's over the two place. or three people in the coaching world doing that. Maybe only four, two or three four or five. <laughs> yeah. The, co the interesting thing, and maybe this is me with uh, Pollyanna or rose colored glasses, but I do think that the industry will weeds out the people who can't back it up because those people are great at making the first sale, but they don't get right. any repeat business or referrals or testimonials. And I'm now five years in this game uh, in the online space. And there are people who were big in, in coaching a few years back that you don't see nowadays because they mm. were great at that first sale, but they couldn't deliver on these big, huge snakes in a plane type promises <laughs> that they were making. And now they're, I'm not saying that they're flipping burgers at McDonald's, but you don't see them nearly er, as many of the ones around the online space that I was used to seeing before. So I think the industry has a way of the cream will rise to the top of Right. You, you just you, it, it gets frustrating at times but you can't get uh, thrown off your game you just do your thing don't worry about what the people who are renting the Lamborghinis and the mansions and all this stuff they can do their thing they're probably not going to be in it for long yeah it's, it's so funny because I hear the reference to Lamborghinis a lot when people talk about 
Oh, yeah, we're picking on Ty Lopez, but um, <laughs> oh, is that who you're talking about? <laughs> well, well, he he actually, I believe, is making good money uh, with it. I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. I think the problem is a lot of people think, well, hey, Ty Lopez has a, a Lamborghini and books in his garage, so I'll do that and I'll rent the mansion and then I'll try to do the same thing. And you get a lot of little uh, like mini me's or clones yeah. out into the world and. Here we are. <laughs> well, you either get rich quick. You know, people want to get rich quick, but that doesn't always work. It, it might work every once in a while, but that's like the fluke. That's not the yeah. norm. That's right. I try to chase those people away. So don't get me wrong. Uh, I think it's good to have big dreams and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the two types of clients uh, that I'm trying to stay away from when I'm doing, say, a discovery call or we're talking about potentially working together, I don't want to work with the person who wants to make a million dollars in the next 30 days, but they haven't built anything up. So right. <laughs> from scratch, I also don't want to work with the person that says, well, I want to make just $500 a month spending money for, you know, a little bit of money here. Not, not to knock that. That's their goal and their choice. But I have had calls like that, and that's not terribly exciting for me either. So I don't want the million bucks in 30 days. I also don't want somebody wants to make a little bit extra spare change either. Well, that's a great brings up a great point because you said on the discovery call. So how do you weed out those people before you get to that discovery call? Well, my um, uh, online application form has a question in there, which essentially says how it's asking for their magic number. How much do you want to be making from coaching, you know, per month? And I think I talked about this in Charlotte at the event you're at. I'm a proud capitalist. I'm all about making money. And I, I think coaches get really weird about it. They feel like they're like Gordon Gacko or something if they talk uh -huh. about money. And I say, don't be weird about money. You should be compensated very well. So I don't want to give the impression that I'm um, – you know, anti-capitalist because I'm not a, the most capitalistic guy that's out there. I love money. But I, I think if you can um, combine the two, then you could do uh, much better. You're serving people, providing value and making good money. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. And so weeding the people out before you get on those calls. I actually had somebody this morning that messaged me and said, hey, um, I well, they made an appointment on my calendar. And the thing was, it was all about them and how they could get what they want, right? And so I reached out to them and I said, hey, I just was wondering you know, before we get on a call and waste each other's time really, is I wanna really know what this call is about because I don't yeah. wanna spend a half hour of my time. Time is precious, I'll never get that back. And I'm starting to value my time a lot more than I did in the past. In the past, I got on mm. every single call because yeah. I was excited thinking that that could be the call, right? And then now I learned that that's wasting their time as well as my time. Yeah, you get burnt out. So I did a bunch of those my first year in coaching, getting to know you calls and virtual coffees yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, one of the other things I have in my application online application form for a call, which has been really good, is it's, uh, there's a question that says, um, it asks them what their biggest challenge is, you know, why are they booking this call? What do they need help with? But it says, how much are you willing to invest to get help with this problem or challenge? And there's uh, $0, I have no money at this time, $100 a month, $500 a month, 1,000, 2,000 a month. So basically it corresponds with my different offerings. If someone chooses $0, I'm not going to book the call. There's the capitalist in me coming out, but I don't want to waste my time or their time. Mm -hmm. I'll send them the free resources I have, like the Facebook group, which you're in. Thank you. Right. Uh, so the Coaching Jungle Facebook group, or I'll send them to my podcast. Oh, there we go. There's Tarzan there go. Mark in my uh, Tarzan garb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that really you? In your terms <laughs> yeah it is i just asked them to make the groin part bigger like as big <laughs> as possible uh, i had to pay extra for that no i'm kidding um so i'll send them to my facebook group or i'll send them to my podcast which has almost 600 episodes so i'm not just saying no i'm not booking a call with you you know get buzz off i'm giving them that help i'm not going to uh, book time to waste my time or their time either if they say they have a hundred dollars a month okay hey great i'll tell them about my secret coach club print newsletter that's mm -hmm. a fit there if they're you know and so each of those choices have, there's a corresponding offer that i have that i can help them with but i want to know their situation coming into the call uh with it before i hop on and and because those calls take a lot out of you i'm sure you have found that too linda when you're yeah. giving your best and you're listening intently and and stuff like that you do a couple hundred of those a year that's going to wear you down 
Yeah. And, and I love that you have like the tiers. I'm going to incorporate that into what I'm doing. You know, having the tiers of the dollar amounts, like how much you're willing to invest, because that really tells you right up front. And it, you know, helps them to like think about it. Like how much am I willing to invest before they yeah. answer the question? Well, the application form is important too, to have some form of hurdle. So when I first started in coaching in early 2014, it was, um, I, this is crazy. I was blasting my calendar link out on Twitter and I have 50 some thousand Twitter followers and I had a lot back then, which oh is crazy. God. I'm thinking, Oh my God, I'm sending my schedule once link out to every Tom, Dick or Harry on Twitter. Right, right. And not, not that they were all bad, but I had way too many calls that were just junk calls. I shouldn't have been doing them. So the application form I use on WordPress, I believe it's Ninja forms is a plugin okay. that my web guy uses that has saved me a ton of time. So here's an example. I had a guy who reached out to me and said, Hey Mark, I want to book a call with you um, to chat about stuff. So I said, great, here's head over to the page. If anyone wants to check out my, to see how, how I do the form, it's naturalborncoaches.com slash call C A L L. So okay. that, that link, that URL with uh, C A L L after. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so he, he, I said, go, pop over here and, and um, you know, have a look. And he got back to me within like a minute or two. He's like, Mark, I'm not going to fill out that form. Like, you know, come on, you know, so uh, let's not waste either our time or whatever. And I, I shouldn't have to fill out that form. I said, look, this is how I do my business. And if you're not cool mm. with it, that's okay. And he flew away and I never heard from him again. But I was picking up a, a very, um, my spidey senses are very sensitive now. If there's somebody has an air about them, like, don't you know who I am or something like mm -hmm. that, I can pick them up pretty quickly and I probably don't want to work with them. So why are we even starting this process? So he didn't book the call, which is fine. It saved me time and it saved me frustration. But if someone's not willing to spend a minute to fill out that form for the application for the call, then I don't want to be investing my time in them. That's cool. And then again, you said you used um, Ninja Forms on I believe WordPress. that's it. Yeah, my web okay. guy I asked him before, and I think it's Ninja Forms for okay. WordPress. Yeah, I love that because currently I'm using um, Calendly, you know, to do my yeah. calendar, and I just have the questions in there. But I'm going to check that out and see what that's all about. So let me ask you, like, how how do you get people to the call? Because you know we've got discovery calls. That's awesome. But how do you get them to the call? And how are you helping people, you know, to uh, figure out how they can get clients without paid advertising. That's what we're talking about. Well, today. I guess um, look at the 30,000 foot view with it. The, to build a successful coaching business without paid ads, you don't need to be doing a hundred things. In fact, you don't want to be doing a hundred things because then you're not going to give each of them the attention they deserve. So what I say is pick three things that work well for you and mm -hmm. that you enjoy. Because if you don't enjoy them, you're not going to stick with them. So the three legs of the stool for my business is podcasting on both sides of the mic. So it's my show and doing shows like this. Hopefully people are blown away and they can't sleep for three days after watching mm -hmm. this. They said, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to work with Mark. He's awesome. Uh, hopefully the Tarzan cartoon did the trick and they just can't resist booking a call with me. Um, well, they only <laughs> want to see you in that loincloth. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. You got to be careful. I don't want to be like Elvis when all the women were feigning and stuff at his concert. So we better take the Tarzan mark down um, before That's it gets right. wild. That's right. um, so there's podcasting on both sides of the mic. Uh, the other one, is Facebook and Facebook group, which you just show that's a big part of that. And then the mm -hmm. third way is email marketing and specifically daily emails, which I do. So if I'm doing those three things, I know that I'm in good shape. Your three things or anyone who's watching this, three things could be different, but don't try to do too many different things because uh, Jim Collins had a, a quote where he said, if you have more than three priorities, you don't have any, which I believe that's mm -hmm. true. You have okay. on the online space, everyone's saying, oh, you got to be here. You got to be there. You got to be doing this and that. And you don't have enough hours in the day. So you pick the three things that you enjoy doing, because if you don't enjoy doing them, you're not going to stick with them. And then you uh, they also have to work, though. So a good example is um, let's say if I really enjoy sticking my head out the window and yelling at people uh, walking around my subdivision and saying, hi hire me, hire me. It's the most fun I ever have. It, I love doing it. Well, it's great that I love doing that, but that's probably not going to get a lot of business, right? right? So that's the two criteria is you have to enjoy doing it, but also has to actually work <laughs> with it. So um, 
that that's what I would suggest the first step for getting people to your uh, what you're talking about with a call page is you need a couple different ways to reach them and those are the ways that I'm reaching people okay well let me ask you um, the thing you mentioned uh, email marketing you know one email a day um, some people may feel like that's way too many what's your thought on that well, actually, it's not not specifically one email a day. There's some days I do multiple. So the okay. final, final day of a promotion, I've done as many as seven in a day. So if people find one a day crazy, <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of daily emails. So a few weeks after I met you at the conference in Charlotte, I spoke at an event in Toronto specifically mm -hmm. about daily emails. And I got some of the same results from people. People think, oh my God, I would hate that if someone emailed me every day and stuff. And there's a leap of faith that it's going to, uh, a bridge that you're going to have to cross to get on board with them. But I started doing it in the spring of 2016. And here we are now about a thousand days later, I've never missed a day. And I've even built an online program around daily emails because I'm such a believer in it. So daily emails work. If you're going to lose some people, sure, they probably would have never bought from you anyways. But daily is huge. And there's um, not enough entrepreneurs online who are actually doing it because they're fearful. They're afraid of chasing people away. Uh, I love it. I, I didn't get any results from my email before I started doing daily back in 2016. Really? And uh, now it's a big part of my business. So is that the like that goes to the top of mind thing where because your name is showing up in their email box, even though they don't read it every day, just that they're seeing your name all the time. And then when something comes up that they know that you do that, they know that you're the person to help them. Does it kind of go along the lines of that? Well, that's part of it. It's a noisy online space. And if you're only showing up once a month in their inbox, you're probably not going to cut through the noise. Here's a quick story to show what will happen when you start doing daily emails a few years ago. I think I'd been emailing at this point like six months straight at the same time every day. My emails go out at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time every day. And there's a day when my email uh, platform, it's AWeber is what I use. They had a glitch, a system-wide glitch where the emails were delayed. I started getting emails from subscribers of mine within about 10 minutes saying, hey, Mark, I didn't get your email this morning. Did you unsubscribe me? Or is it one of them asked if it was a social experiment? I'm like, no, <laughs> uh, it's just delayed. And the email ended up going out two hours later, three hours later, everyone's emails went. But that proved that people, um, they get used to seeing it, you in their inbox at the same time every day. And they're actually disappointed when they're not seeing it. So I like it because it's a great way to purge my list. I chase away people who just don't resonate with me anyways. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's fine. They can go elsewhere, no hard feelings, but you build a much stronger relationship with the people who actually stay on your list. I love that. I love that. You know, next I want to talk. Oh, first of all, I want to let, let people know that I'm using this platform called StreamYard. It's been around since September. And Mark, I was telling you just a little bit about it. It's a new online streaming. You can have up to six people on screen with you, which is one Ooh. thing that's really, really cool about it. The quality is very good. That's a much better quality than a lot of the other streaming platforms out there. They have a free version where you can do unlimited streaming, but then they also have a paid version where it has a couple of different like little upgraded things that you can do with it. And um, so go to li you know, livinglive.tv slash StreamYard. If you guys want to check it out, you can get a, again, you can use it for free. There's no obligation to buy anything at all, but it's a really fun platform because it has, you know, these fun things that you're seeing me do on the screen in the back. And then just lastly, you know, go to my page at Living Live Show and like my page and you get a chance to do that. Now, Mark, I want to talk about the coaching jungle because, you know, that's um, when you talked about the coaching jungle, I'll put up on the screen here. Um, oops, let me take my thing off of there. You talked about the coaching jungle. I was like, I, I got to get in there. I got to find out what this is all about. So why don't you tell us about the coaching jungle? Like what made you decide to start it? And then how'd you get so many followers? So I started the coaching jungle in late 2015. And before that, I had a Facebook group, but it was just for past guests of my podcast. So it was called Natural Born Coaches Past Guest. And okay. it had a couple hundred people in there because I've done a lot of episodes. And even at that time, I did a lot of episodes. But what was happening was I was getting a lot of other coaches requesting to join that group. 
not noticing that it was for just past guests in my show. So I had to tell them, oh, I'm really sorry. This Facebook group's only for past guests and natural born coaches. Mm -hmm. And after I got enough of those requests, I had to keep saying that to people. I thought, hmm, I should probably have a group for all coaches, not just past guests in my show. And that's where the coaching jungle was born. And it, um, what helped me was when I started, I got my first few hundred people where I had a good size following then. But once we got up to a thousand, it really started to roll. Like that seemed to be the tipping point. And okay. now we're up as of today, we're at almost 16,000 uh, members that are in there. So I, how did I get people in there? I got people in there by talking it up. I was like the new, the mother of the newborn baby that won't shut up about it, <laughs> I think. And my apologies, because I think I made that joke in Charlotte. You're probably like, oh God, he's telling the same jokes. <laughs> but he, you do have to talk it up. And I find most people start a Facebook group, but then they don't talk about it or they very rarely actually, or the, even worse, they'll just dump people in without their permission, which never do. That's mm -hmm. horrible. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I did. I just kept talking it up and making sure everyone I was talking to, if I had a call with you, I'd be like, Hey Linda, you should check out my Facebook group. It's got a lot of great coaches in there. I know you'd enjoy it. You could add value. Here's the, here, here's how you can find it. The other tip that comes from there is uh, buy the URL for your group. So I own thecoachingjungle.com, as you can see on the screen, that forwards to the Facebook group. So I don't have to say, hey, Linda, you can go do a search for the Coaching Jungle on Facebook or go to facebook.com slash group slash right. blah, 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 like a mile long link that you're never gonna remember. I just say go to thatcoachingjungle.com at forward. So the for the sake of a few bucks from GoDaddy or whoever, it's mm -hmm. worth it to buy the URL for when you're being interviewed or whenever you're chatting with someone. And okay, oops, oops, I got you on their screen. Okay, there we go. I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, one of the things that you mentioned at the conference that I really loved was, um, we, in the coaching jungle, first of all, you provide so much value in there. And how do you decide, because you, you do daily postings. I know you have a bunch of admins who help you and stuff, but how do you decide what kind of content you're going to provide um, in that group alone? All right, that's a great question because a lot of people wonder, well, should I share this in the group or on my personal yes. profile or on my fan page or whatever? Generally speaking, uh, the Facebook group is you, uh, is mostly coaching stuff, right? It's I say kind of like inside baseball where everyone there is interested in coaching. My personal Facebook and other places could be a little more general, motivational, personal development. And there's some coaching stuff there because I'm connected with a lot of coaches on my personal Facebook as well. But um, now that being said, sometimes in the group, I'll share something that's re not related to coaching, but it's something that's fun, something that's um, – I think people enjoy. So a good example is yesterday. Have you seen that video going around the NASA engineer that um, constructed a booby trapped uh, no. package from Am because of porch pirates from Amazon? That, no. you know, he was having an issue where people were, um, Hey, Abigail, <laughs> uh, yeah. he was having an issue where porch pirates are stealing his deliveries on his front step. He okay. got really frustrated with it. He's a really smart guy. So he created uh, to make a long story short, a booby trapped, uh, thing and he had like cameras inside it. He had a GPS to track it. So when people stole it and they opened up, it shot like a pound of glitter all over their in their car, the room, or whatever. <laughs> it had fart spray, which is really powerful. It would spray it five times, and his cameras caught the reaction, put it on the cloud. So oh it was hilarious to see it. So I shared that video. Uh, that video is going viral. I shared it in the Facebook group. So the big thing is to be entertaining. Don't be too stiff. Don't be afraid to have fun. As you can see with the cartoon Tarzan Mark, yeah. anyone going into that group knows that, okay, th then they like to have fun there. Yeah, there we go again. Yeah. Um, uh, they like to have fun in there. It's not a boring group. There's something like 500 million Facebook groups out there. A lot of them are very boring or they're quiet. They're on life support. You have to do something a little different to convince people to go in and check it out every day. And I think that's something we've done really well is it's, uh, you know, it's a fun spot. We don't take things too seriously. Um, the branding is all done with jungle type themes. You see with the theme days and stuff like that. The other thing I've been really careful about is, um, 
if you're easily offended, I tell people this isn't the group for you. And I've had cases before where I've posted things which I don't think are controversial. If I'm trying to be controversial, I could do a much better job offending. And uh, <laughs> some people have been offended. So perfect example, I met, I talked about this in Charlotte, I'm sure. I put up a poll earlier this year where I asked if you could be mentored by Gary Vaynerchuk or Tim Ferriss, who would you choose? And uh, some people got offended because there was no female choice out of the two. Uh, of them. That was not designed to be a sexist poll or say that men are better than women. That's a simple question. And, and instead of apologizing and begging for forgiveness, I said, if you get offended by this, please leave. This isn't the group for you because you're going to get offended by a lot of other stuff. People online are extremely touchy. And I think that a lot, there's a lot of people that get disappointed if they're not offended one day. Like they're scanning. They're kind of like the Terminator scanning. Where can I get where can yeah, I get scanning offended? for a post that could offend them. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, there, they lock on one. And then, you know, these social justice warriors and stuff like that. Oh, there, I can be offended. They jump on it. I don't want that group to be a safe space where nobody ever gets their feathers ruffled and you, you can't, you have to put out boring stuff. I said to the people who got offended, I think 15 to 20 people took me up on my offer and left. And when I said, okay. please leave. And I said, you guys are welcome to start a, face, a Facebook group for coaches where it's a safe space. You can never say anything that could be deemed offensive to anyone on the internet. But I said, it's going to be as boring as hell, but good luck. Go do it if that's what you want to do. So you have to, uh, it's your group. You can't, um, you, you want to respect people. And, and I like to think I do that, but you also um, can't show any weakness or be, be apologizing when you didn't do anything wrong because you'll get eaten alive. That's a great point. And Ab Abigail says, very creative guy. Yep, yep, exactly. Thank That's you. why I wanted to have him on the show. He's so amazing. Yeah. And what and you then, don't know is I paid Abigail $100 to come on here. And oh, man. It, it just yeah. bypassed me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Abigail's like, I'm waiting for my check in the mail. Yeah, it's on its way, Abigail. Or watch your PayPal. Yeah. Hey, Claudia, good to see you this morning, too. Now, I do have a question about, um, so the coaching jungle. So what I want to point out here is something that you mentioned in the conference that I thought was absolutely incredible. I haven't done it myself yet, but it, I thought it was great information, is you have um, branded the cover page for the coaching jungle. And it has, like, it doesn't have a picture of you, really, like the real you. It has you on there. It has your name on there. It has book a call with Mark. You know, it has your natural born coaches, you know, slash right. call. And so I wanted you to talk more about that and like why people should make sure that they brand their groups so that it has them on there. Well, the mistake a lot of Facebook group owners make is they don't have themselves anywhere on that banner. And the Facebook group banner is a really important piece of real estate. That's the first thing people see when they go into your group. So there's a lot of groups that I would have no clue that Linda or Joe or whoever is hosting that group. So I'm not saying you have to do a cartoon caricature of yourself in, in Tarzan robes, but um, at least have hosted by Joe Smith or Mary Jones or something so that when people go in there, they know right away, hey, this is your group with it and it's a really uh, wasted opportunity by a lot of people that don't use that they have a really boring banner and they don't have their name anywhere on there they, they're missing some opportunities yes you definitely want to make sure that you that you brand just like anything else you do in your business right you're branding yourself anyway because if you don't brand yourself everybody will brand you for you yeah and your pin post at the top of your group or announcements i guess they're called now a lot of facebook group owners are making the mistake to waste that um, pin post on like the group rules or a really soft welcome message. Hey, welcome to the group, make yourself at home or whatever. You have room for that on the right hand side of the group uh, there under description. That's where you should be putting your rules and stuff. Anytime you go into the coaching jungle, you'll see a couple different announcements and I'm selling, right? But the way I view it, the trade off, hey, I'm providing a free community with lots of valuable stuff every day. I've had people say, Mark, I get more from this group than I do from paid groups and programs. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. great. The trade off is I'm going to monetize it because I'm in business. I actually like money. I like having a roof over my head and uh, all that fun stuff. So make sure you don't waste those pin posts at the top on something soft. And don't be afraid to sell to your group. And I told horror stories when we were at our event about people who have hesitated selling to their group. And then they waste a lot of time and energy and they get frustrated. Right. If you're spending the time to do a Facebook group and you're building a valuable community, you better be monetizing it or have a plan to monetize it. So let's let's cover that part because as far as monetizing a group, um, 
what are the rules or what do you recommend as far as rules of, cause there's you monetizing, but what about other people in the group posting, you know, potentially you know, trying to monetize the group? What do you think about that? Well, we're really clear on ours that I put right in the description uh, that if you're promoting, you have to keep it in the theme days. So we have a promotion Friday thread where they can promote whatever they want. Um, and there's a few other theme days that they could do things like that, like share your content Thursday and stuff. But we're very clear on the wall that, um, it, there's not to be any links or promotion on the wall. I'll be promoting on there. And I mentioned once they join and they look at the description that, Hey, FYI, I'll be promoting some of my stuff. If you're not cool with it, you should probably leave or something mm -hmm. like that. But that's it. Um, there, so it's important to have some theme days in there because I, it's a bit of a release of pressure, like a pressure valve uh, that people won't be tempted to promote on the wall as much because they know that the promotion the promotional threads there and they can do it in there, but you do have to enforce your rules and be really strict with that. So if you start getting slack with your rules, it can get overrun by promotional stuff really quickly. There was a Facebook group I was in a few years ago for coaches and I like the admins are great people, uh, but they weren't on the ball watching what was going on with the wall mm. and it became spam city. It became, you know, the group was unusable or, or useless because you couldn't, it looked like the home shopping network trying to go through the wall and you don't want that happening to your group. And that's a great point right there because you, you are the group leader. You're the one who, you know, has had the idea for it. You're the one who's bringing all these people here. So why not use it as a business opportunity because you are providing all this value. You're providing a safe place for people to come and to communicate with each other, to get clients themselves. But you know, why not have, you know, have you be the one who's promoting yourself on the page. I love that. And I'm going to start adopting that because I, I have been one of those, like, I, why don't you tell the story about the gentleman who had this group, he had a whole bunch of people in it and he wasn't able to monetize it. Yeah. I'll give the Cliff's notes version. So yeah. the, um, it was a past client of mine. Who's a great guy. He's uh, just a young guy in his twenties and uh, he's in the podcasting world. That's what his thing was. He helps people set up podcasts. He does editing and all that other stuff. So when we're working together, he started a Facebook group and he said, Mark, can I add you to the group? Now where we're working together and stuff like that, usually I don't like to be dumped into groups, but you know, mm -hmm. he's and he asked, I said, sure, please add me and I'd like to see what's going on. One of the very first posts he ever put in that group was uh, he said, hey everyone, welcome to the group. Here's what we're gonna be doing. I want to let you know that we will never sell to you. We're not going to be one of those groups. This will be all pure value. You will never see us sell. That is, I give you my word. Don't worry about that. And when I saw that, I, uh, I almost fell off my chair and I thought the capitalist died a little bit inside me. I thought, Oh my God, you know, what are you doing? So flash forward a year later, he had built the group up over a thousand members. So it was a good sized group. He had spent a ton of time every day in this group. He was hopping on Skype calls when people needed help with tech stuff about their podcast and picking his brain. And he was giving it his all. He hadn't made one cent from the group. Now, like literally, when I say he didn't monetize, he didn't make one cent. So yeah. he said to me, like, what do I do? And I told him, I said, look, you gotta, you have to get the Titanic um, turned away from the iceberg you're heading towards here. And I said, you got to swing this around. And I said, you got to start monetizing it. So tell the group, just start selling to the group. Don't beg for forgiveness. Just get out there and, and sell to them. Once he put up a post where he is selling, I mean, he had a mob at his virtual door saying, hey, that's not cool. You said you'd never do this and you're just like everyone else. And right. unfortunately he had um, with that, shot himself in the foot with that first post when he started it and he set up the expectation that he'd never be selling. And he um, attracted a lot of freeple and cheaple, which the internet is um, populated with people that will never open their wallets. They don't want to have to pay for anything. And he had um, gathered a thousand of them in one spot and he was servicing them for free basically. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, you got to get, get rid of that group. And he gave it to a guy that he started the group with and he started a, a new group where he's doing it the right way, where he's actually monetizing. He's not making silly promises. Like he will never sell to them. He's not afraid to admit he's in business and he's doing much better, but he wasted a year and a lot of time and energy by making that mistake with his group. Wow. That's big. That's big. No, I see. Um, Abigail asked a question. I think we, we properly answered this one, but what, what about if it's your group, can I promote my stuff? Yeah, so Abigail, that's yeah, that's like, you want to be, um, it, you should be doing it. If, if you have a Facebook group and you're not 
monetizing it, then I would say either get a plan to monetize it or don't do it. You could be doing other things with your business. <clears throat> I know that sounds extreme. I'm sure there's some things that people are wine enthusiasts and stuff, or they're, I don't know, fans of the 1960s Batman series. They love Adam West. Maybe they yeah. want to have a group to, chat. I don't know, talk about that. I, I get that if it's like a hobby, but even then I think you should be monetizing. You could be selling wines or something in there. But uh, yeah, you, you have to, anything you're doing with your business. Be a Batman you, wine. <laughs> you need an ROI, yeah. See, I, mean, I got Batman wine for sale. That's Yeah, there we go, yeah. West. And Claudia West. says, thanks for sharing. Yes, it's just great information. Again, if you guys have any questions, you know, while we're going through this, please ask them in the comments below. Even if you're watching the replay, do hashtag replay and ask the questions because, you know, Mark will come back and, and answer those questions. But so, then Mark, why don't you share with us, like, how did you get into doing this group type of thing? And um, at what point did you say, oh, my God, I got I have something here? So I got into the Facebook group just because I wanted a place. Um, I want to build a community. And I think Facebook groups are great for that. There are very few niches where a Facebook group wouldn't work. <clears throat> so it just made sense for me that way. And, and that's where I started the Facebook group for it. I like Facebook groups because Facebook news feeds are so busy and, and noisy nowadays mm -hmm. with cat videos and politics and <laughs> quizzes which big bang theory character are you and they're sharing results and stuff it's people are kind of tuning out of the news feed a lot of times a facebook group is like a little um country club you know four walls and you got privacy and you can talk and you can share ideas and everything else so that's where why i started the group and why i'm continuing to do it w one trend i'm seeing now and i don't really understand it but i respect people that do it there are some people who build up groups that are my the group uh, size of my group, 15,000, and even some that are more that are then just shutting them down. And they're doing it because it doesn't, they say, fit their, their, um, their business goals anymore. And I respect them for that. I, what I suspect happened is, is that it's a lot of work and a lot of time. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. It's not a five minutes a week. You pop into the group and that's it. I'm in there every day and posting three to four times a day. I have admin who handle stuff, my VAs, but, the, but I'm still in there every single day. And I think that's a really important thing. If you're going to, you want the results from your group and you want to monetize it, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and put work into it. So you're actually in there doing, doing those posts and stuff. That's good to know. I love yeah. that. I, yeah. So um, even days out of day, a few years ago, where I had a really nasty flu bug and I had a, a garbage can down by my feet the whole day. I'm, oh I'm still doing podcast interviews and stuff. It's crazy. Oh. But uh, I was still in my Facebook group that day posting and people wouldn't know that I felt like I got run over by wow. a truck. I still showed up. Now, that might be a little bit extreme, but even when I, I went away to Mexico earlier this year, I was still popping in so people knew I was alive. Um, mm -hmm. Don't sit in there 24 seven. I, I do what I call drive by postings. So drive by postings, I'll post what I have to post so I can get the heck off Facebook and I'm out of there. And then I'll check back in later. I've gotten a lot better at that because mm -hmm. Facebook can eat up a lot of time it, that you don't realize. It's <laughs> like a about it. <laughs> yeah, black hole. Uh, the story I tell a uh, while back, this, this um, this goes to show the last time that can happen with Facebook and social media. I um, decided one day that I was going to cook a pizza and I preheated the oven and I put the pizza in for, I don't know what it was, 20 minutes I had to be in or whatever. And I went into the living room and I opened up the laptop and I thought, oh, I'll just pop into Facebook for a few minutes and, you know, see what's going on. And I had the laptop open for what felt like two minutes or three minutes and I heard the oven beeping. And I'm like, no way, like that. And I went out and I looked and sure enough, the whole 20 minutes or whatever had um, that I'd been there 20 minutes. So it's kind of like when people get abducted by aliens, the missile yeah. I think they don't remember what happened for the last you know, fire in the sky. They show up That's maybe funny. at some country uh, convenience store chugging water because they've been in the spaceship for two days. That, that's yeah. what it's like with Facebook. What You don't realize that if you had a timer right by there showing you, and there are apps that do this, by the way, showing you how much time you're spending on Facebook, you'd be shocked. Uh, with it. it it's a very it's i love it it's great for my business mm -hmm. but it's also very deceptive and dangerous you could easily spend too much time on there and i don't think that's healthy either so i say what i have to say i post in the group or i'll answer a few comments or whatever then i get the heck out for a while 
That's cool. Cause I have heard of apps. I don't remember the name of it, but there's like, there's this app out there that you can say only let me use Facebook for an yeah. hour a day or whatever. And then after an hour in that day, it actually shuts down your Facebook. You can't get back in for the rest of the day. Yeah. But I, I think you can cheat by like, you can go over to your phone or something. I think <laughs> yeah, I know a coach in, um, over in England and he's big in, uh, well, we call it soccer, but I guess they call it football. It's football, not, yeah. not real football, but anyways, no. um, he's, he's big on their, their football and he had to block uh, a few of the main uh, sites that he goes to with it because he was just, it was eating up a ton of time every day. They did it. Uh, there is something as well for Facebook called news. It's called uh, newsfeed eradicator for Chrome. It's a, okay. a Chrome extension. If you use that as your browser and it, what happens, it's really cool. You can still use Facebook for messages and stuff, but when you log, log into your Facebook, your newsfeed is gone and there's just a motivational quote in its place. <laughs> so um, nice. I, now I used it for a bit, but I can't really use it because I like to track my clients, what they're doing. I like to see their content and stuff. So I, I used it for a few days to see, but I'm like, I can't do this because I need to keep an eye on my clients. Mm -hmm. But if you don't need to do that, I recommend checking that out. If you're using Google Chrome, you will save a ton of time. That's time that you can put into creating products. You can put it into uh, writing emails, daily emails. People say, oh, I don't have time to do daily emails. If you took an extra third, took 30 minutes off your Facebook time every day, you <laughs> yeah. have time for emails. Uh, busted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Claudia asked a question here. Oh, first of all, she says, I'm so glad I'm listening to this interview. We're glad you're here too. Hey, Thank Claudia. you, Claudia. Now, her one of her questions. So, what is the strategy in creating a closed group and what is the benefit? So, there's private group, closed group, and um, public group. So, what's the difference and the benefits of each? Right. So, on one end of the um, extreme is the private or secret group where basically people won't find it unless you want them to find it. I don't recommend that unless you're in a, a very sensitive niche. So take, for example, I was working with a coach once who is, um, helps men who are recovering alcoholics, basically. He's like a sobriety coach. And he didn't want that um, everyone seeing who was in that group and stuff like that. So his was going to be a secret group uh, where people would only be invited. People finding it would be because he wanted them finding it. So I understand it for that, but for 99% of people, I wouldn't do that way. Uh, the middle option, which is what I have with the coaching jungle, the one I recommend is a closed group, uh, which means that people can find it, but they can't see what's going on inside that group until they put in a request to join. I recommend that you make them request to join. They can't just join. And then they can see what's going on. And then to the other extreme is, uh, what is it, open group, I think it is, where any Tom, Dick, or Harry can join. Uh, I wouldn't do that because of spammers and stuff like that. The way I have it set up for the coaching jungle is it's a closed group, so it's that middle option. Uh, my VAs have very strict instructions who to accept and who not to accept. So the criteria that we have is, first of all, they don't have to be a coach because some people are interested in becoming a coach. We don't know their motivations, but the criteria we have is they have to have a profile picture. They can't be just the um, faceless avatar on Facebook. They need a profile picture. They need to have been on Facebook for more than 30 days because if they just joined Facebook today and they're trying to join your group, there's a good chance they're a spammer. They need to be a member of fewer than 350 groups. I've actually had people requesting mm. to join our group. Their members, they have like 1,742 Facebook groups, which is nuts. Odds are they are a spammer or they're not going to have a lot of time to devote into giving value to the group anyways. And uh, those are the main criteria that we have with it. Uh, the other thing my VAs do is they do a quick check of the person's wall and the re their Facebook, like their personal profile wall. They want to see if there's anything weird on there. So if there's like pornography, uh, weird violence stuff or whatever, then probably not going to let them in, right? So there, there's a few tips for how you can close it down a little bit. Um, some people ask questions, you know, you can set it up so people requesting join the group have to answer questions first. I don't do that with our group because with the numbers that we have and stuff, it would take up a lot of time for the VAs. And I, I've never done it, but some of my clients have done it and they swear by it. So you could also have questions for admission. Okay. Those are great, great tips. Thank you so much. I love that. Then I have one last question before we go, because can you believe it, Mark? It's been 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Time flies. <laughs> 
Because we talked about early before we got started that, you know, I was like, it's 30 minutes. And then but he was like, if we need to go over a little bit, we can do that. So I'm so glad you're here yeah. to you know, answer all these questions. You could, I know you could talk for a couple hours about this stuff. So, I, but I know we don't have that much time. So my last question is removing people from a group. At what point do you decide that you're going to remove certain people from the group? Well, we are strict with the rules, but let's say, for example, if you break a rule, uh, in the coaching jungle. Chances are it's inadvertently. I know you're not a spammer. I want you in the group. I wouldn't uh, shine up the boot and kick Linda out. So get yeah. that out. What I would do is uh, we would send you a message. Hey, Linda, we deleted your post uh, on the coaching jungle wall because it had a link in it or whatever, you know, have a look at the rules on the right hand side of the page. You, your spidey senses get developed that you can pick out who's a spammer or who's a negative influence. There was a fellow, I'm not mentioning any names, but there was a guy that was in the group for probably a year. He was the most, um, he, he loved confrontation. Like I could mm. say the sky is blue and he would be arguing about it. He was a total boob. Like, I don't know what his deal was. Like he was a professional troll and he's a coach. And mm -hmm. um, we finally have, uh, got complaints and I should have booted him sooner, but finally kicked him out because it was every day he was fighting with people. And wow. um, he sent me a message afterwards and I said, why, why do you care? Like, because he was, I said, it seems like you're not having fun in there. <laughs> you're just fighting with people. Like, go use your energy on something more productive or whatever. Uh, he ended up uh, shortly after someone sent me a picture, he photoshopped myself and two other people in the group, our heads on monkey bodies and <laughs> something like that. So anyways, what I then did, which is a good tip if you ever have haters or trolls come at you is I turned that and spun it into some content for a couple days afterwards about and had some fun with it. Uh, okay. with, ne what does Grant Cardone say? Never waste a good hater or, you know, hater fuel and stuff like that. But I don't know what this guy, um, I think he, um, it, the elevator didn't go to the top floor with it. He was just a very negative presence. So mm -hmm. I don't mind people who disagree with me if they could do it the right way. Um, I've had uh, lots of time people, hey, Mark, I don't really agree with you on this. This is why. Great. I like a good debate that way. But it can't yeah. be uh, a troll or someone who's just trying to rile people up for the sake of it. So don't be afraid to remove people from the group. It's your group. You have to um, be very, uh, not feel guilty and mm -hmm. uh, enforce your rules and remember that, hey, it's your group. You're spending a lot of time on it. You want to be a good group for the people who are in there as well. So don't feel bad about removing people. Thank you so much. So I want you guys to go to thecoachingjungle.com. Join the Facebook group. It really don't is a great- the wall, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go, go read the rules. <laughs> Join the group, read the rules. And then also yeah. go to, if you want to hop on a call with Mark and, you know, see what it's all about, see if he can help you with, you know, some coaching, go to naturalborncoaches.com slash call. And uh, lastly, Mark, like what would be your number one tip for people who uh, not have a group yet and that they, they think they want to do one, but they're kind of on the fence. Like, should I really do it or should I not? What would be your, your compelling thing to say, you know, go ahead and do it? Well, owning your own or running your own Facebook group might not be the right choice for you. But I say don't neglect Facebook groups if, the, if that's um, your situation. So what I mean by that, before I started my Facebook group, I was active in some other people's Facebook groups and I got business from them. So if you decide that, hey, I, I don't know if I can give the energy, the time, the effort into having my own group, at least pick a couple good groups to have your target clients in there get in, provide value, show that, hey, you know what you're talking about, that, that you're good at what you do. And if you give yourself 30 days or so of consistent activity in those groups, you will probably get business from it. So I have people in, my, in the coaching jungle who shut down their groups because they didn't want to spend the time on running the groups. They get business from my group now and that's fine. I'm like, hey, I don't have you know, the bandwidth to work with 16,000 people anyways. Right. I, and I've had some really good ones that are in there every day, posting a couple times a day with good stuff. That's great. I'm not going to get territorial and say, get the heck out of the group or whatever. I want good content in there. I mean, there's people like, uh, comes to mind, Andy Medlam is in there sharing every day. Andy knows the stuff. He's great. Uh, Sanai Floyd's sharing every day. Clay Green. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people that post. They, they post every day and they're showing themselves in there. So you could do that if you say, I don't know if I want to do a Facebook group. Well, at least find a couple of good ones to be a member of 
and it's better to be uh, to do that than pick 500 groups and try to do too much with all of them. Pick just a couple groups that have your target clients and then get business from those. Yeah, and then the point on that too is to not spam people, but is to provide value in those groups, right? So. You, don't, yeah. you never want to spam people. I mean, that's just not the way to do business. There was a group I was in before that had uh, 50,000 people. It was a huge, huge ass group. Uh, there was someone in that group that came in and, and it was a group for entrepreneurs and she was sharing stuff about Facebook ads every day. She quickly became known as the Facebook ads person in that group. So whenever someone had a question about Facebook ads, they tagged her in and she got a ton of business, but she did it the right way. She didn't piss off the uh, mm group owners. She gave good content. She answered questions. She was helpful and she got um, business back in return. Unfortunately, humans are terribly impatient. They think, oh, I want to join the Facebook group today and start spamming the wall and get, you know, 10 new clients today. That's mm -hmm. the wrong way to look at it. You should play the long game, get into a few of those groups, um, do like I just mentioned where you, get, you give that value. You can become known as one of the leaders in that group and you can get business that way. But Mark, where are you going to be speaking next? Are you going to be speaking a lot in 2019? Um, that's a plan. Uh, tell you the truth, I got the, um, these last couple conferences done in one month. Um, traveling where you're at isn't too bad. When you're in the east coast of Canada, it takes a lot out of you because you have to get connecting flights everywhere, go oh, to okay. Toronto, somewhere else. So I'm talking with a few people for 2019 because I would like to get out to at least speak, you know, four or five times next year, but nothing set yet. Mm hmm. Okay, well, you guys check him out. Again, go to thecoachingjungle.com. Um, really, really great group of people. You'll learn a lot. And you know, there's a lot of free value, but also there's you know, way you can, ways you can connect with Mark and other people who are offering different services. And then if you've liked what you've seen here, as far as the platform that I'm using, go to livinglive.tv slash StreamYard. Check it out, it's really awesome. And then also they're on Facebook, StreamYard community. Thank you, Mark, so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, of course, I, I just talked to you forever, but <laughs> yeah, no, I'm we, glad. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to you. I just talked to somebody the other day and we were talking about, cause I've interviewed over 250 people and talking about turning those interviews into podcasts. Like I don't have a podcast yet. So I'm thinking about, you know, repurposing all these onto podcasts. So we'll see what oh, that's all about. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Linda. Thank, thank you so much. And you have a great day. And I hope to see you in person again soon. Yes, you may I be this year. Too. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.